Okay, remember, under assignments from our homepage, you can get to the shortcut to right to where we post our digital paintings. It has these resources here. And of course, your presentations, the presentations from your fellow classmates have given us a lot of other examples of digital painting that we might be interested in. Here are some past student examples. And the only two things you need to post for this project, we get a week to do it, is your primary photo reference and then your finished painting on a blank background. So I'm going to go ahead and start mine. And you can post your photo reference when you're ready. My main reference, and maybe I post more than one, because it's really these two images together. This one, which was just found online, is not high resolution. I am not going to digitally paint on top of that image. That would be rotoscoping, not digital painting. Oops. Instead, I'm just going to be looking at it to try to get that pose. And the reason I ask you to do either a, the whole body of an animal or the portrait from the head up or the shoulders up of a person is that the anatomy of an animal is kind of difficult and worth trying to sketch and paint and get right in the same way that the facial structure of a person, which we're a lot more sensitive to as people ourselves, is in a portrait. So I'm going to try to match this posture, but then I'm going to be looking at this for more of the face and the coloring. And then I'm also going to be looking at stylistic examples like this for colors and finishes and just, I want to have more fun with it. This is a, a real painter, you know, painting with, this is Andre Genie uh, painting with oil. And then this is a digital painter. And you can kind of see, I like that, that freedom of kind of blocks of color and selective blending detail only where I want it to be detailed, getting away with scribbling, all of that would be a lot of fun. And then I also have pictures of my dog Heather because I like all of the, the scraggly fur and I might blend a little bit of that in. I just want to have fun with it. And then I also have the, the back of my youngest son's hair after it's wet because it's really crazy. And maybe that's good reference for like hair and highlights. So just whatever reference is helpful to you, the more the better. Even if I'm just doing it in one pose, it's not bad to have some different angles, different poses. You might get ideas for, for different color combinations that way. All right. So post your reference, that's first. Now I can go to Photoshop and we're going to create a new file and we are going to make it at least 8x10x350. By by but if I'm doing this, we know how important resolution is for raster files. These new computers can handle it. I'm going to make it 11x14x350 by by just in case it turns out just amazing that way. I can print it to the largest size I can print in this lab. Hopefully without it slowing down Photoshop. I'm going to immediately use my move tool and my rulers to make guides around it. So if I ever need to grow it, I'm aware of what my original parameters are. Next, and this is new, I am going to open up my dominant reference, the one I want to kind of take the most of the pose from, maybe not the colors, maybe not details, but the most of the composition from. In the digital paintings that were shared with the individual presentations, a lot of those like really sped up tutorial videos were spent just tweaking composition, how things arrange within a rectangle, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this in Photoshop. Right click, say open with Photoshop. And now I have two tabs side by side. 
right? In order to see them both at the same time in Photoshop, but not have them layered on top of each other, I'm going to click on my original one, then I'm going, going to go to Window, and I'm going to go to Arrange, and I'm going to say Two Up Vertical. And I almost do this, I always do vertical even if they're horizontal paintings, just because I like to look to my right, I'm right-handed for my reference. And that way you'll get them side by side. And you can kind of slide a little bit to see them. This is very much like having your, your canvas all primed and ready and then putting a, a photo up to the side of it so you can draw it. All right, let, now let's see what we know about basic layers and Photoshop. Before we customize brushes, we're going to be making our own brush, but I'll probably do that in the next video. I need to just do kind of a, a loose sketch trying to block this out. So immediately I'm going to lock my background and I do that by double clicking on it, changing it to layer zero and then clicking on the padlock. I want this background just like in digital coloring to be blank white and I do not want to accidentally paint on it. Right? Now I make a new layer. I'm going to call this my sketch. Right? You can sketch with pencil, you can sketch with charcoal, you can even sketch with color. I'll show you all those options. So, first, this is the main tool we're going to use, the regular brush. If you open it up, you'll see a pencil tool. That's pretty much pointless. The pencil tool just gives you exact pixels that are completely filled in. And unless you're doing 8-bit uh, art or bitmap art, we want to use the brush tool because it gives us a lot more control of the edge of our stroke. We have the color replacement tool. You don't need that. It's more complicated than what we need to get into. And we have the mixer brush tool. The mixer brush tool we don't need, but I'm going to show you what it is quickly since a lot of you have jumped ahead, you're excited about digital painting, and you're starting to use it. So what if I just copy this reference? This is not what I want you to do, but I'm showing you how it works. Then I paste it in. Notice that that resolution is not great. And then I go to a layer above it. And on that layer above it, I use not the brush tool, but the mixer brush tool. And then you'll see the settings for the mixer brush up top. And you play with them. But basically, what the mixer brush does is it will steal a color from the layer behind. And you can decide whether you want it to be dry. I'll try dry. Heavy load dry. And you can even mess, mess with the flow. And I'm going to say sample all layers. Let's see. I haven't used it in this new version. And I don't actually use this all this much, all that much. All right. So there we go. We got this. Should be picking up the color from underneath. Not yet, though. Let's see. So I might have to look on one of those tutorials. It's so helpful. But what the mixer brush does is what's called rotoscoping. So what it paints, oh, there it is doing it. It's just impossible to tell. So what it paints on the new layer are the colors from underneath. So you don't ever need to choose colors, right? It's just already painting what's already there. So I do a lot of strokes and it doesn't look like it's doing much. It's not doing much because I changed something. <laughs> Here we go. Yes, there we go. And it's making, I get to choose the direction and it, depending whether I make it dry or wet or blended or what opacity. But basically, woo, It just makes the painting for me. It's basically clone stamp, but going through a brush tool, right? Now, the problem with that is 
it's only going to match information that you already have in the photo. And any flaws that are in the photo, any focal points that are in the photo, are going to be your focal points. And I want you to have more creative control than that. So, we're not going to use the mixer brush in these tutorials. Will I have any way of knowing that you're using the mixer brush? Honestly, yeah. Because I'll see your photo reference, and I'll see your final painting, and if it just looks like you kind of used a filter on the photograph, even if you did all the labor of hand touching all of it with the mixer brush, it's kind of the same thing. Now, may you use it for little parts of it that are giving you trouble? I won't know, right? Pixels are pixels, and you can come up with your own digital painting method. I'm just sharing with you what I recommend. So instead of bringing that photo reference in, I'm making a new clean layer. Fit it on the screen there. After I've locked the background, and I'm going to call that sketch. And I'm just going to use the regular brush, the one on top. The one that doesn't have the cool ability of picking up from layers below. All right, now what size do I want it? I like my brush to be large enough that it's actually like a pencil eraser. So that's our almost 200 pixels at this resolution. And I want it to be not 100% hard, but more than 50% with the hardness edge. So usually I'll do around 70. This is just for sketching. What color do I want? Well, I'm just going to use the defaults. I'm just going to use black on white just so you can see it really clearly. But I'm going to have my opacity down on my brush. Brush is all about settings. I'm going to have my brush opacity down to 70. So I have a size that's like a pencil eraser, but it's pressure sensitive. So it means the lighter I press my tablet, the thinner it is. And so the biggest it can get is around 162 pixels and about a hardness of 70. So as it blends, you can see how it gets a little bit darker. And it looks pretty sharp. But when you zoom in on it, you can actually see it gives a little bloom, which helps bleed, bleed those edges. So this is a lot like using kind of a, a felt tip marker. Okay, to start sketching, I'm gonna start with basic shapes. Wedges, ovals, triangles. I'm gonna be really scribbly. This isn't, this isn't about refined line art. This is about just placing it on the canvas. Remember, this is not on the white background layer. This is on a separate layer, which is very helpful. I try to get some of the biggest shapes first. And of course, you get better at this with practice and with just traditional drawing. So where I don't want you to rotoscope, just paint on top of a photo using the mixer brush or otherwise, there are advantages to using digital, right? So for one, you see how everything got kind of pinched off there. One great advantage is what I've learned in compositing. I can hit Command T, I can right click within that, and I can warp, and I can take my sketch, and I can start pushing it around. to fit better within my frame. You'll see digital painters do this all the time. Really, almost at any step, they're going to mess with their composition. Then hit Return, Deselect. I can take that whole layer and I can move it around. I can use my arrow keys, find a good placement for it. Again, think of this as the black mat, right? So you want some nice space for your painting. And we can always give you more space if we need to. 
And now I start to notice some things that are a little off, so I'm going to change my color. 